Hello, we're going to take a look at doing key combinations in this video, but just before that I want to correct a few errors that I've seen <coughs> just while I've been playing the game. Uh, the first of which is in the turret class. When we adjusted the perk to allow bonus shots, we didn't actually update the logic of the spreading of the bullets which resulted in this kind of effect. If I um, keep pressing the buff to do extra shots you can see that they only go around clockwise, they don't spread to the left to, to the anti-clockwise direction. Uh, so I'm going to update the logic here just to include this bonus shots. So I'm going to copy that and just paste it in after this num shoot. So this bit controls the spread, the location of the bullet. So I'm just going to paste that in there. Save it and check that that works now. So if I just shoot straight up and increase the amount of shots fired, we see we, we get a nice even spread now. That's much better. Another issue, in the last video where we were doing health bars, if I just find that section here, where we update the health bar in the, in the, the level, this should be an integer really. I know I said it's not too picky about whether it has positive numbers or not, but it, they should be integers, so I'm just going to round it. I'm going to do math.round and put the whole number in brackets. And you don't really notice that one until you're dead, so we might have to just let the ships kill us. Hopefully we don't get any errors. Come on ships. So when we die, we'll go to the game over screen, and it was throwing some problems before, hopefully they're fixed with that. So the health's going way below zero here, uh, but we're not getting any errors, that's okay. And what was the final one? It was something else. Yeah, it was in the turret again. It was the shot cooldown. Because of the way we changed the logic to fire faster, this update part where we reduced the shot cooldown, uh, cooldown by one basically meant if we didn't fire for quite a while, we built up a big, backlog, a big backlog of shots. So I'm just going to limit the, uh, the uh, number here. So I'm just going to put if shot cooldown is less than minus one. So if it ever, ever gets below minus one, we'll just set it to minus one. So it can never build up an amount of shots indefinitely. There's no obvious display of that on the screen because the bullets appear on top of each other. Take my word from it, that was, that was happening. Anywho, let's do what we came to do. So we're going to look at doing key combos now which means hopping back to the key pressed function we did and just changing it ever so slightly. So I'm not actually going to add perks here. I'll comment them out for now, we can move them later. And we don't need the traces anymore, we'll get rid of them. What I am going to do is store the key that was pressed. <coughs> so I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to make a new array. I'll make this public as well because the perk class might use it. So public var keys of type array. And we'll just um, set it to be a new array in the constructor here. Where are we? Do it with the rest of them. Keys equals new array. And we'll just stick a comment at the end. <coughs> An array to hold the last three keys pressed. And we'll work on using that now. So every time we press a key, provided it's one we actually want to use, we will push that letter into that array. So when we press A, if we do keys dot push A, and something similar for S and D. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it in both and update the key. So that could be an S and that can be a D. And we'll trace it out actually. We'll trace keys just so you can see that it's doing something. Save that and test it. <coughs> Get into the game and just press a few keys. 
you can see that we're tracing out a series of keys here. So the last last trace was a bunch of keys, so that, that was working. We're going to, going to have to have some logic to uh, limit the amount of keys we have. So we could do that in this key pressed function, but, uh, that's absolutely fine. I think in the, the real game I did it in the logic of the, the every frame bit, but let's do it here. We'll say if keys dot length is greater than three, so if we've got too many keys, we'll remove the oldest key. So let's just comment it, we should do. If we have pressed, if we have stored more than three keys, delete the oldest. Now I, I always get myself mixed up here whether it's shift or unshift, but basically to remove something from the top of an array to work with the top of the array at all, you use the word shift. So it's keys dot and then it's either shift or unshift to remove it. Let's check. Yeah, it's shift. So the one that doesn't take any arguments. That deletes the, the oldest thing in the array, the first thing you pushed onto it. If you want to add something at the top of an array, it's unshift instead of push. So unshift here would take some parameters. We could unshift something onto the array. But we don't want to do that. We want to get rid of it. So if we um, we save it, stick, a tr stick the trace back in so we can check it's actually limiting it. So we'll trace keys. And now when I start mashing my keyboard, we should never get more than three keys pressed. And you can see that we don't, which is good. Instead of actually shifting them, we could just say that when we do get to three keys, we try and trigger a perk. So again, we could replace this. We could just say if keys.length equals equals three. So if we have exactly if we have stored three keys, <coughs> try to add a perk. So we could just have a little function here um, and perk. Instead of doing it all in this key listener thing. So we could just do that straight underneath. Add perk function doesn't take any arguments. <coughs> Make it protected. Protected function add perk. And in here we're going to use what's known as a, a switch statement to allow us to check what was passed, what was pressed, and respond to the many different combinations that are available. It's kind of like a very long if else if else if else it's just a faster way of doing it so we're going to do switch let's just comment it set up a switch statement and in brackets after the word switch you put the piece of information you want to check against so in this case it's keys to string that I want to use which converts our array into a string a string representation. So for example, it could be something like that. That, that would be the result of one of the arrays to a string. And inside a switch statement you use cases. So we'll um, use the case of, let's say, three A's will increase our firing speed. So A, A, a. <clears throat> and we just type case and then the, the uh, particular value we want to test. So this is like saying if keys to string equals equals AAA. And then you put a, a colon at the end. Everything under here happens if this is that. And I'm just going to trace one of the old perks here so uh, increase rate of fire a 
And what you should do after you've you've responded appropriately is you should break. So we um, break out of this switch statement. It's also worth noting that you should have a default. We should have some default behavior. And you do that with the word default. So you type default, do your, do your, <coughs> do your colon, and this is what would happen by default. So let's trace, that's not a valid combo. Close the switch, save it, cross our fingers. So if I press AAA, we get increased rate of fire. If I press SSS, we get nothing. Oh, because need to clear the array because it was getting far too big. So at the end of this switch case, we'll just do keys equals new array. We'll just wipe the array. Try it now. AAA, we get increased rate of fire. SSS, that's not a valid combo. ASD, that's not a valid combo. DDD, go back to AAA, that works. We can't see it though. And that's how a switch works. What we can do now is stack that up to accept different combinations. So if we do case, uh, let's say SSS, do the colon, and here we'll trace increase amount of shots and break out test it so AAA and SSS should work AAA SSS AAA SSS DDD doesn't work and this is how I structured the uh, the perks in the original. If you go back to the start of this video, you can see this code, well, what sort of resembles this code. You can see it passing along the intro of the video. Don't know why I chose that particular bit, but there's your explanation. I'm just going to copy the old buffs, the old perks here. Copy that. <clears throat> Which one was that? That's the bonus firing speed, so instead of this trace, I'll do a new perk. Same with the other one. And replace the other trace. So this one gives us multi shots, I guess. <clears throat> Try it now, and the combos should work. As you can see, we've got rapid fire going now. If I keep pressing it, my firing speed increases. I'm not fast enough to hit it. But if I try the other way, multi shot, I can see that that works as well. And just build it up, uh, keep building it up. So we could have here another case. We don't have to stick with single letters there. It could be case A S D <coughs> colon, and we'll um, trace adrenaline. Get energy back faster. Break. If you don't put break, the code below it will run as well. So for example here, if I didn't break out of the, the switch after doing AAA, I would also get this perk. Let's just test that. If I comment out break there and now try to do AAA, so if I mash AAA now, you should see we get both perks at the same time. <clears throat> and that's because we haven't told it to stop after adding the first one. If I press SSS, we only get the multi-shot one. That's because we're skipping straight to this chunk of the code and bypassing that. So I'm going to put the break back in. Did I try my adrenaline? I don't think I did. Try A, S, and D, make sure that works. You can see we're getting adrenaline traced out, we just don't have that perk yet. And you just build it up, keep adding extra cases for different key inputs, and that's 
my perks done. So quite a short video I think there. We could have a look at adding energy or we could save that for a, a different video. But these switch case statements are quite useful, not just for stuff like this. It's it's when you've got lots of different options and an if just won't cut it. I should have probably put a break after that as well, just in case. The switch statement ends there anyway, but you never know. There could have been something lighter in it didn't want. Just have a quick look at it, make sure we've got no bugs this time. Seem to finish the video with every, with a lots of bugs in the code. Not getting anything problematic at the top. Seems to be firing normally. Rapid fire is not the best in the world. You could always just put the number up. No, it seems to be okay. The explosion's a little bit big. That's not really a bug, just bad design. Right, we'll leave that there for now. See you in the next video.